Welcome back. We're on to our next session. Uh, Simon Loeffler is here with us. He's a creative technologist at Acme, the Australian Centre for the Moving Image. He's also a software developer at New Internationalist and enjoys working with environment sensors and solar power. He helped restart Hackerspace Adelaide, co-founded MOD, Museum of Discovery, and loves using and contributing to open source software projects. Simon is going to give us a tour of the technology at Acme, including the tech that supports visitor experience at the major new permanent exhibition, The Story of the Moving Image. Over to you, Simon. Thank you. Uh, just before we get going, I'd just like to uh, say that I'm speaking from the lands of the Ghana people here in Adelaide uh, about our museum, which is on the lands of the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation in Melbourne. Uh, so I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. ACME is your museum of screen culture, exploring film, TV, video games and art. We're located in Melbourne in Federation Square. Uh, and before we closed, we had 1.5 million visitors a year. We believe that First Nations culture is at the heart of Australian culture, so we wanted to rebuild the Acme Museum with that in mind. It had also been 10 years since our last renewal, so our software and hardware was getting a little tired. We also wanted to present more of our moving image collection, which required the addition of 160 screens. We wanted visitors to be able to collect their favorite items in the museum, understanding why we put them in there and links to other significant objects they might be interested in. That required an extra 420 devices throughout the museum to enable those interactions. We wanted our curatorial teams to be able to deploy new content without asking the AV or tech teams and without physical access to the devices. We wanted our software team to be able to deploy new software to the 160 screens and 420 devices without needing physical access. We wanted the devices to be able to tell us when they were having trouble so we could spend more time with visitors and less time debugging hardware. We wanted to have a consistent and simple development environment so we could try out new ideas with our user experience and testing team. We used Linux. We chose Linux because it has a wonderful developer community and great software support. It also provided us the ability to use tiny operating system images, which meant faster deployments. It was super easy to spin up containers for development, testing, and production builds. It also provided us the ability to use well-supported small computers like the Raspberry Pi for prototyping. It was also really nice to have a consistent operating system across all of our infrastructure. Having one operating system also means that it's much easier for external developers to get on board with some of our projects. We used Terraform and Kubernetes to deploy our Linux-based containers to the cloud. All of the configuration is in code, which makes it easy for our ICT team and also our development team to grow, shrink, upgrade, and even migrate to a different provider. We then used the open source Python and Django to build our museum operating system, which we called XOS, onto that cloud infrastructure. XOS allows the registrations team to document the contracts that they've arranged for object hire and for showing video clips throughout our gallery. It also allows our collections team to import object database records from Vernon, which is their collections management system. It then allows our curators to edit and update museum labels, both digital and physical, based on that Vernon data. It allows our AV team to upload and transcode video content to our media players and interactives. It also allows our IT team to be notified when a media player stops playing its content or a device goes down. It will also have a dashboard for our board of directors showing museum visitation and live interaction across the museum. We also use Linux-based Docker containers for our museum exhibition devices too. This enables us to develop the software on Intel-based macOS laptops, test our software in those containers using GitHub Actions as we push code changes to GitHub, and deploy those containers to ARM-based Raspberry Pi and Intel-based Dell Optiplex devices. 
We then use Bellina Cloud to deploy multi-containers remotely to all of the devices in a single application. We do this via the one line command, Bellina push media player. The success unicorn is a little bit wonderful and they have an open source project, Open Bellina, if you'd like to administer your own cloud-based system. XOS then uses the Bellina Cloud APIs to hook up the device configuration to each of those 420 devices. The device configuration links which digital label to display when a media player is playing back a video from a playlist. It also tells the screen which resolution to output at, how many frames a second to play, and which subsilos to include with a video. We use Python to develop our software. This allowed us to use a single language across all of our projects, including our website, our museum operating system, and all of our devices. A single language means much less overhead when contact switching between projects, which was really important because we had so many projects as part of this renewal. We use Django REST framework to expose APIs for our collection data. So currently we have a works API for objects in our collection, a creators API for the people who created those objects, a playlist API for curated playlists of videos and matched digital labels, a taps API for objects visitors tapped on with their lens during their visit, and a constellations API, which is a curated collection of works that relate to each other in meaningful ways. As part of our renewal project, we wanted to open source as many projects as we could. So far, we've released code for our media players, including synced video players, and also synced digital labels matching the current video playing from a playlist of videos, digital museum labels, both static and interactive labels, including label groups and playlists, our lens readers, which are NFC-based devices that visitors can tap their bus pass-like lens on to collect objects, our video transcoders, which watches a network folder for master videos added to it, and also uploads metadata of those videos that it's transcoded. And also our climate monitoring system, which graphs real-time temperature and humidity data inside display cases. We'd love you to clone them and have a play with them over at github.com slash acmelabs. If you have any suggestions for updates, we're also really open to pull requests. So what's next for Acme? I guess the first thing for us is to survive the post-COVID world of reduced arts funding. We've got a much smaller software developer team now going forwards, so our iteration cycles on everything that we've built are going to be much longer. The next thing we want to work on is opening up our collection APIs for public use. That might also include curated APIs for licensed use by other museums. It also might be fun to play around with some hybrid curated APIs, some where a computer algorithm initially finds the links that it thinks are between objects, and then humans fill in the detail, the significance and meaning of the links between those objects. We'd also like to write up post-mortems of all of our experiments. This would include code, visitation, and revenue, so that we can all reduce the cost of our, vis our museum experiments and speed up the iteration cycle. I've also been wondering if we should be developing a visitor experience co-op for museums in Australia. The group's main focus could be unifying and sharing museum visitor experience software across the sector. We could fund the group ourselves based on visitation or income of museums so we can make it fair for everybody to have the same software at every museum around Australia. We could start with a small lab of software developers and user experience designers to try and see if unifying the experience even makes sense. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, get in touch.
Thank you so much for that, Simon. Um, you've actually, we've actually had our first accusation of witchcraft. Um, so thanks again <laughs> for that. What I'm going to do is let you um, go over to our venueless chat um, and answer a multitude of questions that I know are waiting for you. Um, that was, that was, that looked fantastic. It was really great to hear about what's going on there. Um, I'm going to let you go and answer those questions though. So thank you again for presenting with us here at the mini conf today. It's been great. My pleasure. Can't wait for everyone to start using the lens. Thanks.